Hey everybody and welcome to the Sim Channel. In today's video we're gonna review the GT Omega Prime cockpit. It's GT Omega's first aluminum profile rig and as you can see in terms of size and construction it's very nearly a copy of the Simlab P1X which constitutes somewhat of a gold standard for aluminum profile rigs. By extension the Prime is also basically a copy of any of these. The Trek Racer TR160, the Pro Simrig PSR1, the Alux Sim Racing Rig 4160, and a few more like the Advanced Sim Racing ASR6 for the North American markets. Now, all of these look pretty much the same. Same dimensions, same material, cross-compatible accessories due to the aluminum profile standard. Can't go wrong, right? So just pick the cheapest one and be happy. Or... Maybe not. Time for a quick disclaimer before we start. I got this unit sent for free for the purpose of feedback and a review, but as always you're getting my own opinion on it. I should also mention that the review units are silver while the product that's on sale is black. Everything else is the same though. Oh, and here's the timestamps in case you want to jump ahead. Prime comes shipped in two very neat and very heavy packages with everything you need to build it. Except for the screws of course, they come two weeks after you let support know that the warehouse made a boo-boo and sent you the rig with a second bag of tea nuts instead. And while this may prevent you from finishing the video about it in time for product release, you can now take some time to finish your thesis and do a proper scripted review. Nice. In terms of accessories? There are no accessories, at least for now. It comes with a shifter mount in the box that's large enough to co-function as a mouse tray, depending on which shifter you mount, but nothing beyond that. However, according to an email that came along with this rig, GT Omega has quite a few accessories planned for this year. Monitor stands and mounts, additional shifter and handbrake mounts, wheel decks, pedal plates, an F1 style upgrade kit, very interesting, and many more, whatever exactly that is supposed to mean. I'm hoping at least for a decent keyboard and mouse tray. Assembly should be pretty much the same between all these aluminum profile rigs. It took me about six hours to put this one together and set it all up. Sounds a lot, but I was on my own and it was also my first aluminum profile rig assembly. It all went pretty smoothly, it's just a whole bunch of screws, brackets and T-nuts that need to be put together. The T-nuts are easy to get into the slots and easy to move around. They can rotate a little inside the slots when tightening the screws and then you may have to fiddle a bit with it to get it all aligned again with a slot, but it's essentially a non-issue. And as a special treat, you're getting glitter all over your hands every time you reach into the nutsack. Awesome. Glitter problems aside, there are a few things that I noticed when comparing the GT Omega parts to leftovers from an earlier SimLab order. Let's start with the most obvious one. Comparing the cross-section of the profiles reveals that there's just a lot more material in the SimLab parts. On 40x40 pieces, the SimLab is a whopping 52% heavier per unit length. So it looks like there's some cost cutting going on at GT Omega, but is that really a bad thing? I'm gonna go ahead and say no, and also yes, and no. No, because I wasn't able to make out any flex within the profiles themselves. Yes, because a heavier rig will handle heavy force feedback a little more confidently. And also no, because a lighter rig is easier to move, both for you if you need to push it around the room a lot, and for motion systems where less weight means higher fidelity. So a lighter rig isn't necessarily worse. Me personally, I prefer it heavier, but your mileage may vary. Back to the T-nuts, SimLab uses what's probably a coil spring pushing on a ball to create a snug fit in the slots, whereas GT Omega uses a simpler leaf spring mechanism to do the job. That's a bit cheaper to produce, and of course the chrome comes off, but hey, all that glitters is gold, as the saying goes. What else? Well, the corner brackets are a bit lighter on GT Omega's end, and the finish on them may not look as solid, but that's not really an issue. They do come without plastic covers though, so... Well, I recommend a Swiffer for the places that your vacuum can't really reach. Then again, dust is the new black, so pick your battles. Oh, and speaking of plastic covers, the end caps for the profiles are a bit... Uh, well, well, I guess you get the idea. Okay, first hit like if you skipped straight to the section, and subscribe if you didn't. Now, let's get real here. 
I know I've been a bit nitpicky in the quality section and all the little flaws don't really matter once you're on the track. So let me point out one that does. The pedal plate could join the Russian gymnastics squad for the Olympics. It's that flexible. This is an area where GT Omega really needs to improve. Granted, the braking you see here is with 50 plus kilograms of force at the face of the pedal, but the flex really is brutal and has a notable effect on the brake feel. Actually, it'll already wobble around from lifting the gas pedal off for a gear change. Now, my solution was to replace the bracket with two 120 by 40 profiles going across from left to right. These entirely eliminate all pedal related flex in the rig, but they will obviously add some cost. If you want to do the same on your Prime, I'm going to add a list of all required parts in the description. And if you want the pedals mounted a bit lower than I have it here, you could go for shorter profiles and mount them between the main beams instead of on top of them. Another option would be to buy the Pro Simric pedal section or a Simlab P1 upgrade kit if you want or need the pedals mounted at an angle, but that's an even pricier upgrade. Now let's move on and see this thing flex its muscles in some other areas. Here's the wheel deck, for example, made from a 20mm aluminum plate that could have just been a little bit thicker. This one looks worse than it is though, as you'll never apply a lot of force vertically while driving, and I didn't really notice any flex in the wheel deck on track. And there may be just a little bit of lateral flex in the uprights, but I think that this is the case for most aluminum profile rigs. What you can do to add some stability here is to get another 120 by 40 profile to fit in between the uprights and a bunch of corner brackets to tie it all down. I haven't done that myself yet, but I probably will at some point in the future, even though I expect the effect it has while driving to be minimal. Finally, let's have a look at the shifter mount. The flex here is minimal and wasn't really noticeable to me while driving, so I'd say, yeah, this is fine. Let's talk about the design and construction of the Prime. As I said in the introduction, it almost looks like a clone to the gold standard for aluminum profile rigs, the Simlab P1X. That means that, as for all of the aluminum profile rigs in this form factor, it's perfectly adjustable to all body heights, seat, pedal and wheel dimensions, and you can just get exactly the driving position you want. It's one of the main selling points for rigs of this kind. At the same time, not all is well that bends well, and as noted in the previous section, the wheel deck could and the pedal plate needs to be updated with sturdier construction. Beyond that, I find the mounting position of the shifter a touch too far removed from the driver. A different shifter mounting bracket could do the trick here, or moving the entire support arm to the inside of the uprights. However, I don't find this to be enough of an issue to take action myself, but G2 Omega could have a look at this aspect for future revisions. Before we get to the verdict, note that, pedal plate aside, all of the rigs in the segment are fairly similar and as alluded to in the introduction, their pricing starts playing a bigger role in the purchase decision. Shipping costs can vary wildly between various vendors and definitely need to be taken into account. One thing the GT Omega Prime has going for it is that it's the only one in the segment that comes with free shipping. For my location, the shipping costs for the other rigs are between 60 euros for the prosumeric PSR1 and go all the way up to 165 euros for the Track Racer TR160, so free shipping can make a big difference in terms of the final price. That being said, at the time of writing the script, GT Omega is sadly not shipping to the EU at all due to the UK border issues, so let's hope it won't take too long for those issues to be resolved. If you're in the EU watching this video sometime after Q1 2021, it may be worth taking a look at gtomega.eu to see if things have changed by now. Alright, so let's get to the verdict. What GT Omega has done here is to essentially clone the P1X and cut costs wherever possible. From part design, material and hardware selection, to packaging and shipping. To offer the most competitively priced large aluminum profile Simric on the market. Have they succeeded? Well, I'm sure the price alone will sell quite a few units. After all, 669 shipped sounds a lot better than 800 something for the P1X. And the truth is, all in all, the GT Omega Prime could be a very decent Simric if it weren't for its one major flaw, the pedal plate. In my eyes, the amount of flex in the pedal plate just exceeds the acceptable for a rig in this category. I'm assuming that most people willing to pay around 700 euros or dollars for a Simric will sooner or later be getting a decent set of load cell pedals as well, and that's when this pedal plate just won't be up to the task. Yeah, you can easily fix this issue by replacing it with the pedal sections from Pro Simric or Simlab, 
or just slap two cheap profiles on it like I did, but that will also mostly or entirely close the price gap between this rig and the competition. And once the price gap is closed, the Prime still won't be up to the same standards in terms of materials, part quality and stiffness. It will still be lighter than the competition though, so if you require a large chassis with relatively low weight for your motion platform, or if you need to move the rig around a lot, the Prime might just be what you're looking for. However, as mentioned earlier, a new pedal plate is already in development and is supposed to come later this year. I certainly hope to be getting my hands on it when it arrives, and my recommendation for this rig may change. But I think ideally this rig could and maybe should do a little more than just trading quality for price, and provide some other unique selling point. Because let's face it, even with a decent pedal plate, it will still only be 10-20% to cheaper than the P1X and the PSR1, which will both still beat it in virtually every regard. So what could that unique selling point be? Maybe include a full CO2 compensation for production and shipping to make it the greenest rig out there? Or different color options for the aluminum profiles? Maybe floor facing RGB LEDs? The most likely option though is probably unique accessories and bundles at low or zero extra shipping costs. The announced F1 style upgrade kit sounds quite interesting and could already do the trick if done well. Personally, I'd love to see mounting kits for transducers, racing harnesses, and a zero flex upgrade kit. Keep in mind though that in principle all aluminum profile rig accessories are cross compatible between different brands, so there's some limit to providing a unique selling point for any particular rig with accessories alone. But I suppose we'll see what the future holds. And this concludes my review for the GT Omega Prime cockpit. Is the lower price enough to convince you to buy it over the competitors offerings? Let me know in the comments below. If you have any questions left after this review, let me know and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you're in the market for a new Simric or any other GT Omega products and you'd like to support this channel, please use the affiliate link down in the description below. Now all that's left for you to do is to hit that like button, subscribe if you aren't already and ring the bell icon. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Be safe and I'll see you in the next one.